What's poppin' people? It's your boy Airtrail back with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. And today I'm going to be doing a historic deck deck. Um, it's a historic, historic deck deck because it's the first time I've ever done a historic deck deck. So, um, just a little bit about this deck. You're basically trying to stick a legendary equipment on a creature and go to town. So the equipment we have in this deck are Shadow Spear, plus one plus one Trample and Lifelink and the activated ability can be relevant to make them lose hexproof or indestructible can be relevant there's also ancestral blade which makes a one one but you you can equip for one to give something else plus one plus one so that's solid there's also black blade reforged which is a big reason why we're playing a few different legendary creatures another equipment is model of the skyclaves which auto eclipse gives flying and first strike and plus two plus two Hopefully the creature never dies because the equip cost is horrendous, but I've done it. And, you know, if you got nothing else to do with your mana, I mean, hey, it's a mana sink. Um, there's also Embercleave, four copies of this because you usually you want it every game. And you know, you know what this does from standard, but gives plus one, plus one, double strike and trample and costs less for each attacking creature, has flash and auto equips. So, uh, yeah, just really good. So some of the creatures we want to put our equipments on are Seasoned Hallowblade, which is a sticky threat. There's also Relentless Raptor, which is just a random uncommon from Rivals of Ixalan. But it's a 2-mana 3-3 three, three, um, with Vigilance, and it gets in there, so it often spins over a lot of stuff. So if you can pump this up, it's just a harder deal with threat. And there's also Danatha, who's good to put Black Blade on, has First Strike, Vigilance, Lifelink, and makes our equipment cost one less, which is good. So you want to try to get this down as fast as you can, because it makes Shadow Spear free, and this one mana, and this two mana, so, and this one mana too. Imagine a one mana Black Blade, that's crazy. Um, another important creature is Akiri, who will draw us a card when we attack with an equipped creature. So that's good for uh, filling up the hand. And another creature in the deck is Selfless Savior. Just wanted another cheap creature that uh, provides some resiliency for our equipped creature. Because some of our creatures will be more important than others. And uh, this will just help us keep that alive. Yeah, this is kind of the standard combo of Maul of the Skyclaves plus Season Hallowblade. Probably would be playing more of Maul of the Skyclaves, but I just really couldn't fit it in. I wanted Black Blade with our legendary creatures, so... Um, had to make some sacrifices, but a spicy tech in the deck is Response Resurgence. If you don't remember what this card does, it's the split card where either it does 5 damage to a detecting or blocking creature, or you get an extra combat. Weird about this extra combat card is that you have to play it first main phase, because you want to give the abilities first strike and vigilance, and then you just deal a ton of damage to them. They're going to have to make pretty bad blocks if you play this card, so nobody ever sees it coming. And the last non-land card in the deck is Justice Strike, which uh, for two mana, red and white, instant target creature deals damage to itself equal to its power. Just a solid, cheap removal. Um, doesn't kill everything, but kills quite a lot. You can also, you know, let's say they have higher toughness, you can use combat to then, you know, first strike combat, and then use just a strike to finish the job. Looking over at the land base, we have four copies of Sacred Foundry, four copies of Needle Verge Pathway slash Pillar Verge Pathway. I'll never remember the names of these. <laughs> There's also Clifftop Retreat. I wanted to limit the amount of tapped lands. So uh, we have three mountains, five plains, and two Castle Ardenville. Pretty good in the deck because um, if you have nothing else going on, you can make a human, which you can then equip your uh, equipment to, so that can be good. So I have 22 lands, which is pretty serviceable. We're never spending more than like 3 mana and stuff for like a Kiri or Maul of the Skyclaves. Um, occasionally we'll spend, you know, the 7 mana to equip, but that's just late game, and we usually never get that far. Um, in the sideboard, I just threw some stuff together um, for Tormod's Crypt. Alpine Moon, Daxos for some life gain against like aggro decks, Eidolon against Planeswalker E decks, Thalia, this is just against combo E spell heavy decks, Tomic um, for land shenanigans stuff, Brilliant Vortex against life gain, Shadow Sky to have you know a sweeper, 
And I think I was going to have more Wrath of Gods, but I didn't. I think I had ran out, run out of wild cards at the time. But well, I could probably add another Shadow of the Sky, but I'd rather upgrade other decks, honestly. Because <laughs> um, I'm trying to play on a budget here. And the last one is Solar Blaze. Interesting, with Solar Blaze, you can save your Halo Blade. Everything else pretty much dies, but we got some indestructible in the deck. So, yeah, I hope you guys like this deck tech. Um, could do some gameplay with it. I don't know, just seeing how much people like this deck. It's just a different take. I've never seen this deck before, ever, really in Historic. So, um, yeah, give it a shot if you want. Here's some stats on it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's historic. So, yep. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you guys liked it. And uh, stay tuned for the gameplay, which will come out soon, and watch my drafts and other videos and stuff. I do box openings and all that stuff. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you next time.